studies suggest that if we want to avoid the extinction of one million species and all the benefits they provide, if we want to avoid the collapse of our life support system, if we want a world not exceeding two degrees Celsius, we need to go renewable in terms of energy, but also we need to use half of the planet in a more responsible way and keep the other half in natural state. And to achieve that, we need to commit together to protect 30% of our planet by 2030. The environment, our natural capital, every year provides $72 trillion in free support to the global economy. To put that into context, imagine that we combine the GDPs of China, United States, and Japan, now double that number. That's how much value we get from the environment every year. But our overuse of natural resources are costing us $6 trillion per year, and that number could go up to $30 trillion by 2050. A world above 2 degrees Celsius is not insurable. The CEO of uh, one of the big insurance companies said that. That world without wild places is not even investable. The good news is that protecting ecosystems can provide greater value than destroying them. We just need to give ecosystems the space they need to recover from our abuse and continue providing for us. And I know because I have seen it. Now let me give you an example. In 1999, this little place called Cabo Pulmo in Mexico was an underwater desert. The fishermen were so upset with not having enough fish to catch that they did something that nobody expected. Instead of going out and trying to catch the few fish left, they decided to stop fishing completely. They created a national park in the sea, a no-take marine reserve. We went back 10 years later, and this is what we saw. We saw it go from degraded to pristine in just 10 years including the return of the large predators like the groupers, sharks, and jacks. And you know who else is thriving? Those visionary fishermen who are now making more money from tourism inside the reserve and better fishing around it. And I've seen similar examples around the world. You know, on average, the biomass of fish is six times larger inside reserves than outside. And the economic benefits from tourism can be enormous. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park brings in $5 billion to the Australian economy every year. That's 30 times, 35 times more, fi more than fishing and many more jobs. And in the United States, every dollar invested by the US government on our national parks produces $10 in economic revenue to the local economy. The problem is that we don't have enough protected areas. But you know the really good news? That protection generates more value than destruction. New York decided that instead of spending $10 billion building a wastewater treatment plant to produce clean tap water for the city, the city decided to spend only $2 billion protecting the natural water supply, the Catskills the mountains and forest north of the city. And now New York has the reputation of having the cleanest and most drinkable tap water in any large city in the United States. That's the same value realized by the Chinese government after the 1998 floods. Realizing that future rains could create similar types of devastation, local authorities brought in environmental scientists to help restore the ecosystems along the Yangtze to provide that natural protection from floods. It would have been most cost more cost effective to keep those ecosystems in place, but I hope we can learn from these lessons. And I know that you are not used to hear good news from scientists, but this is what I can tell you today. If we rise to the occasion, scientists will not have to write the obituary of our planet. And our kids will not look back at us angry and disappointed. Instead, 
we will tell stories like Cabo Pumas, stories of resurgence, stories of renewal, stories of people coming together to save the planet we love. I look forward to taking that journey with you. Thank you.